The Nationals are not excellent. And I think that is, Ken, the crazy thing because, I, I mean, I guess this is like a yearly discussion, right? I mean, why aren't they better? And now when you talk about Davey Martinez, exactly what territory is he in their manager right now? Dangerous territory. And this series in L.A. is a big series. They have an off day on Monday as they go home to start a series with the Mets on Tuesday. Off days in May for struggling teams often lead to change. That's possible here. And the problem for the Nationals is this is what they do. They have never had a manager in their history go three full seasons. It's incredible. Now, granted, they only started in 2006, but my goodness, we've gone 13, 14 years here. So they're kind of damned if they do with Davey and damned if they don't. Damned if they do because it's just them spinning their wheels once again. Mm -hmm. If they don't, well, you're sitting with a manager who a lot of people in the game believe is not the right leader for this team. He's had some bullpen management issues in the two years he's been the manager. Of course, a lot, a lot of this is not his fault. Construction of that bullpen, not his fault. The injuries, not his fault. But, Mark, you've watched them. I've watched them. Should they be playing better? The answer is unequivocally yes. Yeah, because they're relying on youth. And when you rely on youth, you usually see energy. I'm not seeing the energy from this. And you look at the starters. Obviously, Max Scherzer. You have Steven Strasburg and Patrick Corbin. I think everyone in baseball would love to have that scenario play out. But you have younger guys. Bryce Harper's gone. You're relying on effort. You're relying on that identity. Go out there and play hard. I don't see that effort. I see it individualized, but I don't see it collectively. That's the reason why I think it, it, rely, it, it, it leans on Dave Martinez. But Mike Rizzo needs to take a little bit ownership of what's going on because he has created this But here's roster. the thing. They cannot punt when you, you you're giving out the money that they're giving out to the top three starters who are all fantastic and all yeah. performing this year they have to go for it don't they i mean they this is not to. hey we have a young team it'll be next year this isn't next year with them right they have to go for it but the mentality from organizations is i'll give yourself a month month and a half and then we have to start making adjustments you see it with player transactions now you're going to see it with transactions with managers because these guys are not being paid where you have to worry about taking that salary and leaving it. But they do have to with the Washington Nationals. Here's the problem. Joe Girardi is sitting out there. Buck Showalter is sitting out there. Two pretty accomplished managers, mm -hmm. I think we would agree. They're not going to hire one of those guys. They're going to bring in somebody from within. Either it's Bo Porter, the announcer, Randy Knorr, the AAA manager, Chip Hale, the bench coach. One of those three most likely would be the new manager. And, again, teams are going away from big time big-time, big-salary managers these days, but would that be the smart move? Joe Girardi or Buck Showalter? Wouldn't that change your team right away? Of course it would. And yet, the Nationals don't like to pay managers. That's kind of one reason they run through them the way they you do. You can't spend $500 million on your starting pitchers and not pay a manager more than $700,000. I'm sorry. Like, I, I know the managing role is diminished, but you can't, can't do that. They're sixth in baseball in, in salary for teams. <laughs> Come on. There's expectations yeah. that you have to meet. As players, everyone in that locker room has to look in the mirror and say, we have to be better. Yeah, they're not right now, although uh, they won last night. We'll see what they do tonight in L.A. The Twins are dealing. They win again 6 to nothing. Their pitching has been outrageous. Jake Odorizzi hasn't allowed a run his last 20 innings. And, you know, it's interesting, Ken. I believe you wrote about this a little while ago for The Athletic. They did something that no one's ever done in Major League Baseball. They hired a pitching coach straight from the college ranks, and you think it's paying dividends for them? It is. The last time this happened in baseball, it actually has happened before, but it was 1980, Kevin. Been a long time. Dick Hauser, Florida State coach, goes to the Yankees to be the manager, but this is the first straight to the majors hire from college since then. Derek Johnson, the Reds pitching coach, he was in the Cubs minor league system before he went to the Brewers. So what the Twins have, and this, you cannot – Talk about this enough. A first-time manager, a pitching coach who is a first-time major league pitching coach and had never played professionally or coached professionally, and an assistant pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner, who had played, was a pitcher, but had never coached before. Now, what is the secret? What are they doing here? They are guys that, the pitcher guys, are into the advanced data, the track man, all of the things that are so common now, but they're kind of experts at it. And it's clearly made a difference in guys like Odorizzi, in Martin Perez. You've seen a transformation of this staff. And I remember in spring training, some older scouts were kind of yelling at me, saying the Twins, I don't know what they're doing with Wes Anderson. Guess what? Guys, these guys are pretty good. And Wes Anderson's done a tremendous job there. 
right out of the University of Arkansas. Mm. I'll tell you this, Jose Barrios, it doesn't matter what pitching coach you have. If you haven't seen this young man throw the baseball, he's a budding star, if not a star right now. He's going to only get better. The last couple of years, 26 wins in the big leagues, and he's getting better with every start. He continues to throw that fastball, but also the finishing pitches. He has the ability to go through the lineup. And isn't it refreshing, a young pitcher being able to go through the lineup three times, even more? He has that ability. He can front line to start. But Martin Perez, Odorizzi, gives a little bit of credibility to this whole pitching staff. All right, uh, enough about that, because you threw out an interesting little nugget. We were just uh, schmoozing in our meeting today, talking about what we're going to do on the show, and you said, what if they went out and signed a certain relief pitcher? Yeah, I think Craig Kimbrell is the perfect destination if they continue to do some damage in this. The reason why, Corey Kluber goes down, and the Cleveland Indians are their worry. But... I think Craig Kimbrell not only can pitch this year with them, but extend themselves. And if you look at it, the closer is Blake Parker, also Taylor Rogers, the left-hander. So they mix and match, and they're 10 for 10 in save opportunities. I think Craig Kimbrell fits perfectly. His personality, he, he brings credibility because of his championship last year with the Red Sox. Everyone is looking for that. I just wonder if it's going to be now or it's going to be after the, the draft. Well, Mark, this is what's interesting. So all the teams are thinking right now, let's wait until after the draft. We won't have to give up the pick. Well, guess what? Everyone's thinking that same way. They're all going to jump in after the draft on Kimbrell and Dallas Keuchel. So you could make the case that for an enterprising team, the move would be right now. It's going to take Kimbrell a couple of weeks, but you'd have him before June rather than having him in July, which is what's going to happen if you sign him after the draft. The Twins, as Mark said, he's right. It's a perfect destination because here's a team that has come on in a big way. Best record in the majors entering today. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Indians didn't do much in the offseason. They've had injuries this season. They're compromised in a number of different ways. What the Cleveland Indians should have done was put their foot on the Twins' throat for one more year. Now maybe the Twins can put their foot on the Indians' throat and go about it that way. This is a power move that's going to change a lot of different dynamics, and we know how good Craig Kimbrell is. It's just a perfect fit. Look, I I think we all think they're good. I think we all think they have an excellent chance to win the division, but that changes changes everything. If they were to make a move like that. Now, we're assuming, of course, that Kimbrell will come back and be Kimbrell. He sat out. We saw what happened to Greg Holland last yep. year. I know Kimbrell's not Greg Holland. They're different pitchers, but it's a concern for every team in this mix. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy we're talking about this midway through the <laughs> yes, season. Yes, it is. Midway through the season, and one of the best closers, if not the best one, still out there. 